Hello, welcome back to Brandon Sushi Live Learning. In this episode, I'll be sharing some of techniques that you can use with the default cube using Spreadshock and Geometry Nodes. Before I go into Nodes, we know already uh, this is the default cube. And uh, in with Blender 2.93, there's this tools to add cube. So this thing is already kind of interesting. So something that can extend your default cube, kind of like blocking it uh, in, in any way you like. It's just simply like snapping to the default cube. Uh, since the default cube is very simple, um, I mean, in this form, you don't even rotate it. <clears throat> you can you can kind of continue doing this and kind of create like an abstract kind of art. This in itself is already pretty cool. You can, yeah, you can continue. Uh, simply, you know, you can join them. You can, because they are all separate objects. If you join them, um, you can then just do a remesh with a, with a block or fox cell if that's what you want. So this is already pretty cool. If you are doing it with nodes, um, with geometry nodes or sphere chop, which one do you choose? Um, it's totally up to you. I can start with uh, geometry nodes. You cannot have anything. Uh, you, you need to have at least the default cube, of course. I can delete everything here. And with geometry nodes, we can then create mesh primitive cube it's not called box it's called cube so cube can have different size so you can pipe this in a uh, pipe this out into the geometry nodes parameter you can then do like things like transform that sort of thing let me save this very quickly so this is a default cube So we can we can hide this for now. Um, we know that uh, at some point we can do more like instancing, etc. I want to show you Spreadshop's cube. Connect this using V. This is more advanced version of a cube where you can also have resolution. And then you can have this matrix controlling the default positions, scale, x, y, z. Okay, scale, x, y, z is a bonus. <clears throat> On top of this, um, let's see. I'd like to show you <clears throat> something that Svecho can do, geometry, uh, geometry nodes cannot do at the moment. Um, point scatter um, actually yeah like, we can have like random vector very easily with spare talk right bunch of cube random position this random is not completely random as you can see it's more like spherical so you want to add Randomize. Okay, something like this is very sphere chop, but in geometry nodes is actually very much like sphere chop. But just uh, it's it's gonna be built in inside Blender, of course. But sphere chop has a lot more nodes at the moment. So look at this merge by distance. You know, it's pretty cool. It's getting rid some box that's too close together so this is something that you can use and this will generate a lot of objects but Sverchok can also merge it into a single object so you can have like a cool effects uh, like a yeah you can actually just remesh this morphing back into default cube. So anyway, that's a sphere job. And you can also point random random points on volume. 
volume or edges. Currently, geometry, geometry nodes doesn't have that yet. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's hide sphere chop one for now. Back to geometry nodes. I want to have another default queue. So this is gonna be something that will scatter the smaller cube. So this is uh, the cube that we have earlier. I'm gonna make it 0 0.1. I have the, the new cube. I'm just gonna treat it as uh, scatter point scatter. Point scatter object. So we know that we can already do this. We can we can actually s snap the points into we can snap it into grid, I believe. A little bit like that. You can see it's now arranged to the grid. It's not it's not yet like 3D grid, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, anyway, with this guy, we can use point instance also to scatter more cube or default cube. Which is already kind of nice. On top of that, we can point scale scale the default cube into different shapes the uh, randomizer attribute randomizer can work with the scale so now we can see the the size and everything in xyz is actually Pretty different. I just gonna change this to a vector. Now they are all different in scale x y z. I think this is the coolest. This is the coolest thing. You can see they are all still a single objects, and you can separate this manually or using Svertov. There might be another way here that I haven't found. Uh, you cannot separate objects at the moment. I don't think. But the cool thing you can do with this that Svertov actually doesn't have is um, boolean so I'm gonna show you that very quickly you can see it here attribute randomizer and point scale is actually on top of that added on top of that so that's kind of cool I don't want to rotate the cube at the moment so I just want to use it as a boolean the new boolean with Blender 2.93 actually support multiple geometry. So there's also cool things like self-interaction, hole tolerant. So this is the the original default cube, and this is the point instance cube. So multiple objects. Pipe everything together and wait a few seconds or minutes. Hopefully, just few seconds. Okay, now we are done. Um, this kind of like doing the difference between the two and we have a an interesting result here based on the original default cube so this is pretty much what one I want to show you it's a um, I know it's pretty basic and simple but I, I'm hoping this kind of increase your vocabularies in terms of understanding a blender and just even the default cube can create a very complex objects uh, difference intersect you can also use union I forgot what I want to show you uh, okay with sphere chop if we go back to sphere chop this is sphere chop alpha box and we can scale over here we can also scale in geometry nodes but we can of course use the spread job object with geometry nodes
you know what I mean? <coughs> so it's pretty cool. It's like this. Uh, I think I forgot something, but or maybe just pretty much this is. Yeah. So this is Spectral working together with geometry nodes. Um, this one is doing scattering and boolean into itself. And and yeah, okay. We, if we use merge over there, we can try using vector p field like this in there. And yeah, hopefully it doesn't crash. I think it's starting to get a little bit more complicated because we have. 24 boxes overlapping and now it's doing boolean maybe it will fail to calculate but this uh, I think this is can be a good start if you are using the this procedural way maybe don't do too much um, and it's a good idea if I actually remesh this one before I pass it into geometry nodes but yeah the, the, the way you, you can work Okay, it crashes, but anyway, hopefully you find that useful. I'll, I will try to kind of expand that idea, and yeah, hopefully that's useful. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.